When it comes to your retirement, do you want to have the same old plan everyone else has? Of course not. You're unique and have your own goals and dreams. Don't be treated just like a number. This is your retirement. So it's time to think differently. And you're in luck because you've found the Retire Your Way podcast with ILG Financial. At ILG Financial, you won't find generic run-of-the-mill plans containing the same old cookie cutter solutions. Dave Chase and the ILG Financial team focus on building one retirement at a time using their Think Differently philosophy. And that means your own comprehensive plan with customized solutions built to achieve just one goal, yours. So put on your Think Differently hats and get ready to take back control of your retirement today and for all the tomorrows to come. ILG Financial's Retire Your Way podcast was created just for you, and it's starting right now. When it comes to retirement, do you want to have the same old plan everybody else has? Of course not. You're unique. You have your own goals and dreams. Don't be treated just like a number. This is your retirement. So it's time to talk with Dave Lopez of ILG Financial and talk about a specific retirement plan for you. And boy, we have a treat for you today on our podcast. We're going to talk about Social Security again, specifically Social Security. And Hamilton Morales is back. And Hamilton, of course, of uh, fame when it comes to Social Security work. He's been doing this for, what, over 10 years, I think, specializes in Social Security. And Hamilton, you have an NSSA certification. (laughs) What exactly does that mean? Yeah, I certainly do. It's a National Social Security Advisor designation. Um, It simply just means that I've gone through the training, actually several trainings, uh, with a a couple of gentlemen up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, One of those gentlemen actually worked for the Social Security Administration for 35 years. So I don't get stumped many times, actually much at all. But if I ever do, I have somebody I can go and get the answers from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me jump in. Uh, Yeah, Hamilton is, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Yeah, Hamilton is being modest. He's been uh, giving Social Security tips for well over 10 years now, and uh, he is just a godsend to our firm. Uh, One of the things we really pride ourselves over here at ILG Financial is, you know, it's right out of one of those uh, Goodfellas movies. It's not, it's not, I don't have to be the guy because I know a guy, right? And we've talked about this before is that, you know, you want to be really leery of a firm that's relying on just one person's knowledge. And one of the big draws uh, our clients have found with us is this team approach that we have. So uh, Chase and I, as we build these plans, we kind of quarterback the plan out. But we have literally specialists in every field necessary to make sure we're getting the best advice to build the best plan for the client. And today you're going to see a great example of that. I would say over the last 10 years together, I can't even count the number of times we've come back with a plan, Hamilton. I don't know if you can, where we said, all right, here's the scenario. Here's what I think happens. What am I missing? And he just blows us away every time with ways to save clients money. And with you guys' permission, that's we're specifically going to talk about examples of that today. What do you think? Well, before we get into all that, let me just uh, tell folks how to get in touch with you if they need to have a longer conversation about what we're going to talk about. 540-720-5656. That's 540-720-5656. ILG Financial. You can go to ilgfinancial.com anytime. Uh, I'm Ron Stutz, and once again, here is Dave Lopez along with Hamilton Morales, and today's topic, Social Security. All right, Hamilton, I've got you on the clock, so I want to take every advantage of it, if you don't mind. How's that? Absolutely. Let's do it, man. Yeah, our our clients love this stuff, and they love the detail, so you're the detail guy. Here's what I want to focus on today in the time that we've got, the widow's benefit. Mm-hmm. And for if it, with, with your permission to keep this simple today, we're going to use one example of a family for all of these different situations. How does that sound? Oh, that makes it a lot easier on me. Thanks. It, yeah. So let's <laughs> let's assume, right, when you, of course, when you talk about widows or widower's benefit, mm-hmm. it means one of the married uh, spouses passes first. And that's what right. we're talking about today. So today, let's assume it's the husband who passes and the wife is the survivor. So we'll be using this. The husband's gone. This is what happens to the wife. Understand, uh, folks listening today, that that is interchangeable, right? If it happens the other way around, this works exactly the same. 
Am I right? That is correct. You got right. it. So today, Hamilton, what I want is we're going to talk about three different scenarios, and I'm going to let you kind of lead how this goes. And Rod and I are just going to jump in when uh, we have questions that either we have partic- specifically or questions that we think the clients would want a little more um, uh, elaboration on. The first one, number one, is if the husband dies, right, before either of them have turned on Social Security. Yeah. Right. Now, that may be before they're eligible, right? Mm-hmm. Or it may be that they're eligible, but they've just chosen not to. So let's yeah. start with that one. Yeah, that's a good distinction, too, because whenever we talk about any subject as it relates to Social Security, there's so many different variations depending on the situation. And so I hope your listeners will listen to this. Um, the devil is in the details. It's very important to understand uh, how specific we have to be when we're talking about Social Security. And especially when we're dealing with hypotheticals, there could be a little tweak here and there that would change the whole outcome. So please forgive me if I do get real detailed into some of this because it's very important. But yeah, so now we have a, a married couple. And you know, a lot of people think about a married couple and they say, oh, you have to be married for 10 years. No, that's only if you're divorced. If you're married and you've been married for at least nine months and your spouse passes away, you could be eligible for widow's benefits. And so if we're talking about a couple that neither one of them have turned on their benefits, and the, in this case, the husband passes away, what are the options for the wife? And so a couple of things, if the wife is under full retirement age, there are several things that we have to deal with. Again, they haven't turned on their benefit yet. So the wife has options. She could turn on her benefit now, and then, which will be reduced because she's under full retirement age in this particular scenario. Um, and then she could turn on the widow's benefit, which is the higher of the two benefits at her full retirement age. That way, that benefit, the widow's benefit, will not be reduced because she's turning it on at her full retirement age. Or we can flip it around, assuming that her benefit may be her age 70 benefit will be higher than the widow's benefit, we would turn the widow's benefit on first. Again, if she's under full retirement age, it will be reduced. And then let her benefit grow till age 70 and then turn her benefit on at that point in time, assuming it's higher. So understanding that that there's options. In fact, when I give seminars, I do seminars all over the country for, for a lot of different advisors that are out there. And one of the things that I make sure people understand is that if you have not turned on your benefit yet and you lose your spouse, you have options. Don't rush into making a decision. And that's where you guys come in and are such a huge help to your clients because you, you kind of slow the pace down and say, okay, let's take a look at this and see how do we maximize being able to take benefits because you have two benefits you can take at different times. How do we maximize that? And I think the big takeaway, thank you for that, Hamilton. The big takeaway is I wish it was as easy as to say, if this happens, do it this way, right? (laughs) And if there's a takeaway, and I'm going to be a broken record during this podcast, if there's a takeaway from this is, listen to this, don't feel like you have to remember it. All you've got to remember is, God forbid if this happens or if there's, let's say your spouse is sick and we think this is is coming, just call us and we'll get Hamilton on the phone and the three of us will work out the the best scenario. Once we give Hamilton your specific numbers and your spouse's numbers, then he will say, here's the way to go and here's why. Correct? Uh, Absolutely. Um, and, it, and it's really important, you know, to not go at this alone. I mean, you've, again, you lose a spouse, your world is turned upside down. You've got so many things on your plate that you have to deal with. This is one of those things that you really shouldn't have to deal with by yourself. And you definitely don't want to go into Social Security asking these questions because, A, they can't give you advice. And B, you're not real sure what kind of advice or not advice, what kind of answers you're going to get from social security. And this is a good time for me to jump in with that phone number again for ILG financial. You have questions, anything regarding social security, call ILG financial at five, four, zero, seven, two, zero, 5656. 
Once again, back to Dave and Hamilton. Yeah, I like that point. And I want to go back. Now that you've laid out that first scenario, let's break it down a little. So this example was, if I heard you right, the husband dies, right? And they're eligible at this point for Social Security, Correct. right? So they're over. that means the wife and the husband are, in this example are over 62 years old, Correct. right? They, and they maybe they haven't turned, either of them haven't turned them on. So when you said one way we might do it is we might take the her reduced benefit, mm-hmm. right? Which means that's based on her earnings, correct? Correct. correct. And then we do the math backwards. And I'm, I know I'm roughing it, but if you turn it on at 62, it's about 70% of her full benefit, correct? More or less, assuming full retirement age of 67, that would be correct. Yeah. So she gets this reduced benefit and then she keeps that benefit right up until her husband's full retirement age? No, her full retirement age. Okay, her full retirement age. And then at her full retirement age, she's allowed to switch to the basically the widow's benefit. Right, which would be what he would have. Well, again, this is this is where things get real fun. Right. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if if he's under full retirement age when he passed away, has not turned on his benefit yet, then there's there's a calculation that Social Security uses up to what he would have received at his full retirement age. So he's going to get the higher or she's going to get the higher of the two. If he is over his full retirement age when he passes away, again, hasn't turned on his benefit yet, but he's over his full retirement age, then the widow's benefit is going to be the amount he would have received had he turned on the benefit the day he died. So again, devil's in the details and it's... No, that's exactly what I was looking know, for, that yeah. is that example, because you're right. Sometimes if he dies at 64... His social security statement might say at 67, he was pr- estimated to get 3200 a month. Right. But that's assuming he worked till 67 and contributed, correct? Correct. That, that is correct. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're going to basically do a calculation since he died to give him maybe a little bit of credit. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So again, the takeaway for that one is if they're both over 62, the husband passes, call the office. Right. Yeah. We'll need. Right. We're going <laughs> to need. Absolutely. Right. But it shows it's this is why this is so valuable. Right, Hamilton, because right. it shows you there's so, the devil, like you said, are in the details. We well, once we get specific information and what we would need is the wife's Social Security statement mm-hmm. and the husband's statement. Right. Yeah. Well, even with the statement, remember, everything that's on the statement is estimated. Mm-hmm. And so the best thing to do if we can get that information is is. Somebody's got to call Social Security and let them know that he has passed away. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and so when she does that, they're going to do what's a, a calculation of what's called the death PIA. PIA stands for your primary insurance amount. Basically, that's your actual full retirement age benefit amount. So they actually do the calculation as of the day they passed away, and that locks in what the full retirement age benefit amount would be for him since he's passed away. They call it the death PIA. So once we have that number, that number is locked in. So that's great. Hers is still an estimate. It, it just mm-hmm. is. Um, but that's okay. Again, it gives us, it gives us the idea or at least a ballpark of where it's going to fall into place. It no, you're right. That's good perfect. Idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, to do it exactly, we would need both exact numbers and you never have the, the, the exact number for anybody until they turn it on. That is absolutely right? correct. Yes. So having having one number, having his number exact, and having a very good estimate of hers will be enough for the for you and I to get together yes. and come up yes. with an, the the ideal recommendation. Yeah, right. And, and I want to I want to backtrack just a little bit. Um, so understanding, just throwing some rules out there as it relates to widows' benefits. You can file for widows' benefits as early as age sixty. Now, if you do, it's going to be heavily reduced. The, if you do it at age 60, you're going to get 71.5% of whatever the widow's benefit is. But if you need it, you need it, right? You can, you mm-hmm. can do it as early as age 60. If, you, if the person filing for widow's benefits is disabled, then they can file as early as age 50, okay? Now, If you take any Social Security benefit prior to your full retirement age, whether it's your benefit or the widow's benefit, 
if you are under full retirement age, not only is it reduced, but if you continue to work earning wages, you're going to have to deal with the earnings test as well. So there's a lot of factors that, again, details, a lot of things that we need to know before we can actually present you with an idea of, of the way you should go, because that's going to have a lot to do with it. Yeah. So the real answer is if someone said to you, Hamilton, my husband just passed, what should I do? Your answer always is going to be the same. It depends. <laughs> it depends. That is <laughs> that is the most important two words that I deal with all the time. It depends. So let's get some details before I can give you an yep. answer of what it's going to look like. And then that's the second, right? It depends. And then the next response is, here's what I need. And yep. you're going to ask for the, the PIA, the death uh, pr- uh, is it primary insurance amount, right, Correct. for the deceased mm-hmm. husband? Yes. And you're going to ask for her social security statement. And we're also going to ask these other questions. Are you disabled? Right. Yep. Yep. And we're going to ask, are you going to continue to work here yep. if, if the wife is 62? And with those, that, that's really what we're going to need to know to make a good recommendation between these two examples. Absolutely. All right. That's number one. That is the if the, <laughs> if the husband dies and neither party is turned on Social Security. Correct. And the answer to that is call the office. Yeah. It depends. It, it, <laughs> it depends. depends. Right. Hey, the number, once again, is 540-720-5656. We appreciate your listening to today's podcast, but if you have any questions about Social Security, uh, any aspect of that whole conversation, call 540-720-5656. That is for ILG Financial. Dave Lopez and Chase Lopez, of course, have a Social Security expert. Uh, he has SSA or NSA. SA certification. His name is Hamilton Morales, and he's part of the team at ILG Financial. Once again, here's Dave. All right, number two. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire on number two. Now, the husband dies. Mm -hmm. His Social Security is already on. Okay. Right? So the then now there's, uh, and we'll address, the third one we'll address is if his and hers are on. So let's just assume his is on. And then we can have two scenarios, right? The wife's isn't on because she's under 62. She's too young, Mm -hmm. right? Or she's over 62 but hasn't turned hers on. Right. Okay. Yes. So nothing changes with the exception of what the widow's benefit will be. So the same because she has not turned on her benefits yet when he passes away, she still has the same options that she had when both of them had not turned it on and he passed away. The difference is, is now we know what the widow's benefit is. There's no guessing. The widow's benefit is going to be the amount he was receiving when he passed away. That's the widow's benefit. Now, how much of that benefit she's going to get will be determined based off of the age she is when she turns it on. So if she turns it on prior to her full retirement age, it's going to be reduced. If she turns it on at or after her full retirement age, she's going to get 100% of it. Okay. Now, can she do the option of taking her benefit at, let's say, 62 and waiting till full retirement age and switching? Yes, absolutely. And then then she'll get the... That's exactly right. Yeah, then she'll get the full benefit, right? The full hundred percent his full benefit. Yeah, so it, it's identical to the with uh, just like we talked about with the other one. Identical. The only difference is we now know what the widow's benefit is because it's the amount he was receiving when he passed away. Well, that's a good question. If going back to the the one we did before in number one, then if she took the widow's benefit at sixty two, it wouldn't be the the PIA, the primary insurance, it would be re- the primary insurance reduced. Yeah. So let's think through that real quick because this is very important. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and when we talk to when we talk to your clients and we're doing planning, even when they're both, you know, they're, they're both alive, we're doing planning with them and we're talking about Social Security and when should they turn on their benefits and so on and so forth. Our first goal in the planning is always to have the higher of the two benefits that person wait till age 70 if possible. Mm -hmm. Now, this not only benefits that person, but it's even more important it benefits the spouse, assuming 
that the one spouse passes away first. Because remember, the higher of the two benefits is going to last two lifetimes. And that's even more important when you factor in this idea that imagine the husband dies. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, the wife is now losing half a pension, maybe all of a pension. Mm -hmm. Right? So she needs to make sure that that Social Security check that she's taking over of her husband's is as big as possible. Yeah. And you know what she's not losing? Half of her expenses. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. So, so it's it's so so expo- it's so important to to try to do the planning on the social security side. The one who has the lesser of the two benefits, we're not so concerned when they when they turn theirs on. We're more concerned with the person who has the higher of the two benefits. Again, we want to push that out as long as we possibly can. Some people can, some people can't, but that's our first step to look at. Can we push this out to age seventy? Not only for that person, but for the surviving spouse, assuming the one spouse passes away early. Now, the flip side of that is what if he turned his on early? So let's say he turned his on at 62, 63. Mm-hmm. Well, we know that his benefit's going to be reduced. It's the way it's going to, it's the way it works. So he turns his benefit on, it's a reduced amount. Years later, he passes away. Well, we know that the widow's benefit is going to be the amount he was receiving when he passed away. That includes all the cost of living adjustments along the way. Let's say that she turned, she didn't know any different. She didn't have the benefit of you guys to help her out. And she just went for the higher of the two benefits at the time. And she took the widow's benefit or what he was receiving when he passed away. She took her, took that early prior to her full retirement age. Now that amount gets reduced again. Yeah, that's almost criminal. It's double reduced. It gets double reduced uh, in that particular situation. So again, it's so important to have somebody that you can walk through the scenario with and make sure you understand exactly what is happening and even more important, how it's impacting you and it's going to impact you in the future. So important. Yeah. So in that situation, let's pull that thread a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So the husband turned his on at 62 against our prudent advice. How about that? (laughs) Right. And turns it on. It's now he passes. Mm -hmm. The wife is now 62. Mm -hmm. So she'll get a, it reduced the reduced amount reduced again. If she turns it on. Mm -hmm. Right. But maybe that's still the best course if she can use his and let hers grow to 70. Ah, that, that's absolutely right. So it just depends. It just depends <laughs> on the situation. It yeah. really does. It may be the, the best thing to do is to turn it on at 62, take that second reduction. It's okay because what we want to do is give her time for her benefit to grow to age 70, assuming that her age 70 benefit is going to be higher. So again, those are the things that we sit down and we look at that and we calculate that. We have software that we have access to. We plug in those numbers, and it and it actually shows us, um, you know, which which one's going to be higher at age seventy versus the other. Yeah, and that's a, a key point that you mentioned. And we, uh, Ron and I, talk about this almost every month on the podcast. Is that when the question is how do we make our retirement plans? The uh, the first thing we do is let's look at the data. Yeah. Right. Because it is just data. And once we have the data, we can make educated decisions based on facts and data instead of shoulder shrugs. And I don't know how many times we've asked folks, they've said, well, so-and-so said I should turn it on at this time. And we're like, yeah. well, what's the data on that? And it's like, well, they just said it's better because, right, where would we and make recommend? Been, and it might have been better for them, but they may have a different situation. Well, and it might have been better by luck, but it certainly wasn't better right. because they did any analysis out of <laughs> right. it. So. Right. So your point about the software was a great point, right? Is that we have software together that we run that can, what is it, over 500 different ways a married couple can turn on Social Security? You're missing a zero, but yes. Right. How many is it? It's at least 5,000. 5,000 permutations of how to take Social Security. How in the world would you make the right decision, right? Well, our software runs every one of those permutations. And then all we do is change the variables that the client wants to change, like 
What's inflation going to be? What do we want to calculate? How, when is Jim going to die, the husband? Right. When's Mary going to die, the wife? And we can say it'll pull the best possible payout based on those variables. And then we can turn around with the click of a button and say, well, what if Jim doesn't live to 85? What if he lives to 95? It'll right. immediately run the, and say, well, in that case, this is the best one. So we will run that for, and we do for all of our clients. But for those listening who aren't clients, please, please, before you get a social security decision and go to the social security and do something that maybe you cannot change or you can change, but with a penalty, which we won't go into today, right? Please have us or someone who has access to sophisticated software to run these 5,000 plus simulations for you and tap into an expert like Hamilton and before you make a decision because the social security department unabashedly says we do not give advice. They do not want to be held accountable for a wrong decision. Uh, So that's the takeaway for number two. This Number is a three. Very important conversation today, folks. It's all about Social Security with uh, Social Security Specialist with NSSA certification, Hamilton Morales, along with Dave Lopez of ILG Financial. And once again, if you want access to all that information after you listen to this conversation, the number to call is 540-720-5656. Now, back to Dave and Hamilton. Ron saves me again. I just, this stuff is a, such a passion of ours. I would talk forever about it. So thank you, Ron, for keeping me on, on track. Right. I, I just want to make sure everybody knows how to get in touch with you. No, I appreciate you. Uh, all right. Number three, this is the last one we'll do for the day. The husband dies, Hamilton, mm-hmm. and both of them have turned their social security on. So there's a couple uh, examples of that, right? One is maybe the wife's turned hers on early. Right. And maybe the other one is she's turned it on at full retirement age. But I don't know if that makes a difference in your examples. But let's how would how would do that play out? Yeah, that's that's a great point. I was you know, you must have been reading my mind because I was thinking to myself, I need to distinguish um, because a lot of people have a misconception of how that works. So whether you turn your benefit on early or you turn your benefit on later, it has zero impact on what the widow's benefit amount will be when you turn it on. So if you turn yours on early, let's say 62, obviously you get a reduction and then your spouse passes away. Some people have the misconception that if you turn your own benefit on early and get the reduction, you're gonna automatically get a reduction in the widow's benefit. And that's simply not the case. Each benefit stands on its own based off of the age you are when you turn it on. All right. So let me give you a a specific example, right? So the wife, Jane, is 62 and has just turned her Social Security on. Okay. Okay. Jim is 70, right? Mm -hmm. And his Social Security is on. Okay. Jim dies. Mm -hmm. Does she get his full benefit or is it reduced because she's 62? And that is going to be dependent on when she turns it on. So if she turns on the widow's benefit before her own full retirement age, it will be reduced. If she waits, takes our advice Mm -hmm. and waits till at least her full retirement age, then turns on the widow's benefit, she'll get 100 percent of it. Right. So the takeaway, it's just like the example number two. Right. It's a double would be in this case, not a double reduction reduction, because his wasn't reduced, but she still gets his reduced uh, if she takes it early. So the plan in that case would be to continue. If yours is already on, keep yours. Right. And then switch to his at your full retirement age. Here's another key that I want to make sure people understand. If you already have your benefit turned on and you lose your spouse, you only have one option at that point in time. And that is, what age am I going to turn on the widow's benefit? You can't turn on the widow's benefit and then go back to your own benefit. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. Since your benefit's already been turned on, there's no more going back to your own. So once you make a decision to go to the widow's benefit, that's it. You're done. Right. So usually that's a pretty easy one, isn't it? Sure. Uh, Hamilton, as we look at it, and if his benefit is larger uh, than her benefit that's on now, 
right? Yeah. Usually what we're going to say is unless, and um, usually we're going to say, hey, maybe keep your benefit until full retirement age to yes. get his full benefit, right? Unless yes. you just can't afford not to. Right, right. There's always, there's always caveats to that depending on the situation of the client and what they're dealing with, their expenses, those types of things. I mean, look, some people just have to turn on the benefit early. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. But if we have options based off of their income plan, and by the way, I haven't even mentioned income plan, which is such a huge piece. It sure um, is. It, it, Social Security is a piece of that puzzle. If you do not have a written income plan and understanding how all these factors affect you, not only today, but in the future, you're doing yourself a disservice. How in the world are you going to be able to make good, solid decisions without seeing, again, going back to what you said, the data? you got to have the data to make a good, solid decision. Yeah, and I sure appreciate you saying that because, like I said, Ron and I are a broken record month after month talking about the planning and having the data and how you've got to have an income plan. But here in real time, folks listening can see – a, a concrete example of why it's so right. important. And we talk to clients about this all the time, Hamilton, where we'll say, okay, we're going to go over social security and how it works for you, but understand social security and nothing else operates in a vacuum. Your pension doesn't operate in a vacuum. Your social security choices aren't in a vacuum because right. we have the other income. We have your other savings, right? We may want to use some savings for, for three years, right? To let the social security grow. So, but somebody to your point who has no savings, right? And they need the money. Well, the multiple options are pretty easy. If you need the money, you need the money. If we can't get it somewhere else because you don't have a pension and you don't have a 401k bucket to dip into, then it's easy. Now, if you have those things, now we have not only choices, but we have very attractive options. So we can wrestle. Maybe it's better to turn it on early and save the 401k money for later in life and let it grow. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's better to take the social security, uh, spend the, a portion of the 401k now. So it is genuinely different for everybody. And or boy, Dave, you, you, you huh. missed one piece. What's that? Maybe you don't even need the social security. You've done such a great job in saving for retirement. Social security is really kind of an afterthought. So what are you going to do with that? You know, what what if you you took that and you leveraged it for maybe your favorite charity or for your grandchildren or or whatever the case may be? Yeah, you you, know, hit, I mean, you hit the nail on the head, and that ha- <laughs> that actually happens more than yeah. you know you would think. Of course, depending on the the practice, but we deal with quite a few high net worth clients, mm-hmm. and you're right, the options are incredible. Imagine taking that and leveraging it into if you don't need it instead of just giving it to the kids and the grandkids. Yeah. What if you yeah. leveraged it into – because the Social Security check's guaranteed for the rest of your life. Turn it in – just dump it into life insurance that gives you a multiple of the savings tax-free to your heirs. Yeah, income tax-free. Right? Absolutely. So you could turn you could turn a, a $20,000 Social Security check into over a million dollars in tax-free death benefit to an heir if you wanted to. Yeah. So there's all yeah. kinds of planning strategies that are tax-efficient. But we just have to know your situation. So, Rob, so, did we miss anything? Actually, I want to go over one scenario we didn't even think of. And I just hit me upside the head. What if you have a husband and wife and the husband passes away and neither one of them are in their 60s? Let's say they're in their 40s mm-hmm. or 50s. Holy cow, what happens then, right? So, and, and I'm, I'm not even going to include potential children into the equation. Okay, that's, that's right. a... That's another conversation Podcast. for another yes. time, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so what happens to the wife if the husband passes away and she's, let's just say, in her 50s? Let's just keep it simple. Mm-hmm. So remember what I said before. The earliest that you could take widow's benefit is age 60. That's the earliest you can do it, okay? Unless the, the surviving spouse is disabled. But we're assuming they're not disabled. So what are her options? So let, let's get the scenario, get specifics here. So let's say they're both 55 and he passes away. So she's five years from being able to take widow's benefits. And she's seven years away from being able to take her own benefit. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what happens there? Well, nothing until she turns 60 at the earliest. But what if all of a sudden 
two, three years later, she meets somebody and mm-hmm. they think about getting married. How does that impact the widow's benefit? So very simply, if she remarries prior to her 60th birthday, she cannot take her deceased spouse's widow's benefits. That's number one. Number two, if she remarries after her 60th birthday, even though she's still married, she's currently married, she does have the option of taking widow's benefit off of her deceased spouse. So if you know, you're know you getting ready to get married and you haven't gotten any advice on this, when would you want to know that if you're 59, let's just say 59 and a half, you're getting ready to get married, wouldn't you want to know that, hey, could you wait six more months before you get married so you have some options? You bet you would, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, that ex- and here's a great example, too. This is another, it depends, doesn't it, right? Yeah. Because what if the new husband's got a better social security? Doesn't matter. No, I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to wanna take his then if he passed? Well, absolutely. But here's the beauty of it. If her, if her deceased husband, first husband, passes away, she waits and gets married after her 60th birthday. She can now take the widow's benefit off of her deceased husband now. And her current husband, let's say 10, 15 years down the road, passes away. He has a higher benefit than what she's currently getting with her first husband. She can jump to the higher benefit at that point in time. So it doesn't hurt her by doing that. So what you're saying is when my clients start to find someone else and it gets serious, yeah. tell the spouse, tell the, the potential fiance that they got to have dinner with Dave and Hamilton there and we got to hash this out before we all agree if we're going to get married or not together. Especially if you're coming up, you know, you're pretty close to your 60th birthday. It's, it's, you, you need to think through that real quick again, for that reason from the yeah. widow's benefit, once you hit 60, you've got a lot more options at that point in time versus if you went ahead and got married. Prior yeah, to. then if if we can make that tweak so they sh- they have the opportunity yeah. to take care advantage of two husbands' yeah. benefits, yeah. maybe that we should walk her down the aisle. Yeah, I that's, think, that's, a, that's a good possibility. Yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job there. So, I, hey, thanks for adding that one. That was on the list. I, I got distracted, so I appreciate you saying that. That, I will tell you, is the beginning of the discussion, right? Oh. Yes. We've just talked about three scenarios. There's all kinds, as you mentioned. What about kids if they pass early? Because there are benefits eligible for the uh, mm-hmm. minors or disabled children. That's mm-hmm. another podcast. Ron, I think we covered everything, right? The takeaway is always on my end, because I know you always ask me for it, is plan and data, right? Please yeah. don't try to do this on your own. There's too many moving parts. You don't know what you don't know. If uh, you have an advisor and they're not talking to you about this, uh, at a minimum, ask them why they're not talking to you about it and ask them to do their research and figure it out and get back to you. Or give us a call or another firm who has uh, uh, their priority is in retirement planning, who has this information and can walk you through this minefield in a way that can benefit, benefit you. Hey, let me just say that I think uh, not only was this conversation today very informative, because I certainly learned a lot just by listening to it, but it was also entertaining. So I'm, I don't want to take any of that we got to make it fun. We're talking about Social Security. <laughs> yeah, Ron, please don't go home and tell your wife I told you to get divorced for Social Security reasons. <laughs> yeah, wife Definitely hopping, not. husband hopping. You know, I mean, it's all... <laughs> Part of the possibility, I suppose. But if you want to find out more about Social Security and all your options and all the things that you should do as opposed to what you should not do, make sure you check out all your options. Make sure you talk to someone who has an expertise in uh, Social Security. And again, with NSSA certification, Hamilton Morales is here, along with Dave Lopez, of course, of ILG Financial. If you'd like to get in touch with ILG Financial, the number to call is 540-720-5656. One more time, that is 540-720-5656. And once again, you can go to ilgfinancial.com to find out more at any time. Hey, guys, it's been fun today. And uh, thank you so much for expressing all those opinions and all that expert advice to all our listeners out there. 
My uh, pleasure. Dave, uh, Morales, uh, Hamilton Morales, you guys have a, a great uh, week, and uh, we'll talk to you next time, I suppose. See you next time. All right. Take care. This is the Retire Your Way podcast. I'm Ryan Stutz, along with Dave Lopez and Hamilton Morales, and we appreciate your listening. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for any individual or entity. All information contained herein is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of Dave Lopez and do not necessarily represent the views of the Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial, legal, or tax advice. Please consult your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory services offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and ILG Financial, LLC are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.